this is a sliding garage door lock. This is an interior one. They make some that have a handle on the outside of the garage door with a key that you can turn and unlock and lock from the outside. This one's just for securing your garage door from the inside. I'm going to show you how to install it. It's a very inexpensive way to make your garage doors a little more secure when you're not at home. To install it, you're going to need some screws. These are number 14, three quarter inch long, self-tapping or self-drilling uh, sheet metal screws. You also will need an appropriate driver. This is a 3 8 inch driver for the hex head that I have on these screws. And I do recommend hex heads as opposed to something like Phillips because you need a little bit of force to drill through the metal and screw it in. So first, if your garage door has one of these emergency release levers, and most do, um, there's a crack at the top of your garage door. Somebody could just slip in a bent metal coat hanger, grab that thing, pull it, unhook it, and as soon as that's unhooked, your garage door can be lifted from the outside. Now, the other benefit is if you mount them correctly, such that there's a slot above their current slot, you can open your garage door just slightly and lock it in a slightly open position for ventilation. These guys are pretty inexpensive. I was able to buy them for less than $5 each when I shipped it to the store. Um, if you want to pick it up in person, I saw them in the $9 to $10 range in the store in stock. Your garage might have already come with one of these on each door, but I recommend you have one on both the left and the right side of the door for full security. They're reversible, so you can put them on the left or the right side of your door. In case you're wondering how the spring-loaded mechanism inside works, it's pretty elegant. I like it. Now obviously, if you're going in and out of your garage door with an electronic opener every day, this isn't something you're going to lock every time you leave the house. It's more for a longer term trip, or if you don't use your garage door too frequently, to make sure it stays down. So when you're installing this, you want to put it on the lowest one of these slots that you can. You might not be able to hit the bottom one. Maybe there's a hinge or a support piece in the way so you can't get down that low. But don't put it in the top one here if you can put it in the middle one. Because if you can put it in this middle one, that means the door can go up that far and you can lock it closed slightly open. So try to hit the lowest one you can. Hold it up. Make sure it's not touching the bottom or the top, but you have it nicely centered in the middle. You want this edge here to be flush with your door, possibly even slightly farther back. Make sure you position the body far enough in so that when the bolt is drawn, it won't hit this rail as it goes around the corner at the top. Now, the correct way to do this is you get it lined up exactly where you want it, not too high, not too low, right in the middle of the slot, and set up evenly. And you mark the holes you're going to go into. I'm going to use two in the top and two in the bottom, although you can put in more screws if you really think it's necessary. And then you use a punch to hit into the center of each of these holes. You want to make a good divot in there so that you can use that to guide your drill, or in this case, the end of the self-drilling screw. Now, if you don't have a punch, nail works fine. If you have a clutch on your drill, you don't want to be at the drill setting. You want to be just a little bit back from that. And then you want to be in high speed when you're doing the drill on the drill. Position the tip of your self-drilling screw in the hole you made with the punch. And now you're ready to install. If you've already made the hole, when you put the drill, when you drill the screw in, you can go down to your slow speed setting to give yourself a little more control. Do make sure you have the clutch arm. Now that was the right way to do it, but now I'm going to show you how most people actually do it. 
they get the thing positioned, they hold it up with one hand, they put the thing in the hole, and they just go to town. And you're counting on the clutch there to stop it in time, so you don't uh, strip the hole. You might do it the right way for the first screw to hold things in place, and then it makes it a lot easier just to go through with the other three. In my garage I have some Reflectix that's on the inside of my garage door, and so I have to cut that section out. Of course, if you've manually locked your garage doors with a slide lock, you don't want somebody using the remote control to try to open it from the outside. So you'll definitely want to push and hold your lock button until your light flashes, saying that it's locked out the remote control. This is actually a good security thing to do um, if you're leaving for a while anyways. And to keep somebody from pushing this button without unlocking the door, you might want to make a little sign, tape it up.